G'day, John. Um, my name's Liam Allen. I'm Bo Hemley. And we're uh, doing our presentation. So our discussion is on retaining the culture and uniqueness of schools through lay leadership. And since we're going to be talking about can you actually do that while implementing measures to improve teaching and learning and the church's evangelical mission. I'd like to start off with a quote from Tony George, who is a headmaster at King's School in Parramatta, and he was formerly West Australian principal at private schools. And he said that we must resist the urge of homogeneity in schools and promote what makes them unique so as to create a society of people with different experiences. Essentially, he was fearful that as schools become more centralised, that they are going to use the aspects that make them individual, make them unique. And therefore, we're going to have students who don't have those unique experiences too. So I guess to understand that and to look into that more deeply, we need to understand what culture is in a school. And we can look at the definition of culture from a corporate point of view. So Brown in 95, he defined culture at organisations two ways, both formal and informal. Formal culture is strategy, it's products that you provide, it's your financial resources, your management, your structure, all those kinds of things. Your informal culture are the things like feelings, experience, attitudes and beliefs of staff, leadership style, the internal politics of an, in, of a, an organisation and the behaviours of the people involved in the organisation. And we'll expand upon that and relate it to a school setting a bit later. But essentially our discussion using our school as an example, Masnot College, is how does a new principal come into a school and retain its uniqueness and culture while at the same time improving teaching, learning and the church's evangelical mission. Using Masnod College as an example, we are going to explore that question because we are in a unique setting with the significant changes that occurred at Masnod College four or five years ago. Thanks, Liam. So I'm going to look at where Masnod is now and how it sort of got to that point in time. So just a bit of background into what Masnod College in Les Moody is. Um, it's an all-boys school and we cater for day and waters. We've got 850 students roughly in total with about 100 of those being boarding students. It's located in Les Murdy in the Perth Hills. Within our Hills community, it does have a really good reputation. Um, this reputation is something that, probably going back a couple of years, wasn't that well known across the wider um, Perth or state zones, I guess. Um, Mazenod wasn't really big on marketing itself through social media, and we'd sort of, they'd sort of keep to themselves um, in terms of um, when you're looking at CEWA uh, offerings for staff development or CEWA governance, um, Mazenod sort of stayed away separate from that. Mazenod was established in 1966 and it's run by the Oblates of Mary Immaculate and they had their own vision for Catholic education based on the teachings of St Eugene de Mazenod. <coughs> Up until 2016, sorry, Mazenod has always had a rector as its principal. So in 2016, they went through an extensive selection and application process to transition into a lay principal. Um, I just want to mention at this point that Mazenod is part of um, a wider Mazenod body in Australia. So we've got brother schools in Mazenod, Victoria, and in Queensland called Iona, and in Queensland there's also St Eugene's College. Um, all of those schools at this point in time, or at that point in time, had a rector as their leader. Um, and now they've tra transitioned the same as us into a lay principal. So I think it's particularly important when we look at this Belmont and Cranston, and they recognise that the diminishing presence of the religious in our schools really can have an effect on the charism of schools, and that the staff that are there need to be actively promoting that, and the leadership needs to guide that that charism and tradition of each school is carried on and it maintains its uniqueness. With that, um, the Mount Oblates of Mary Immaculate have formed the Damasnod family and that recognises that all these schools are in a similar position and that we need to work together with the lay staff to help promote the charism and uniqueness of our community and our schools. So looking at the culture of Masnod College, it's an order-run school. 
Um, the college prides itself on having its own identity and separation from a centralised CEWA system. So going back to when we had a rector, um, CEWA might send out some opportunities for PD or some governance issues and Masnod would then decide which ones of those it wanted to fully integrate with. Um, they, Masnod really did seem to see itself as someone's a Catholic school but separate from the CEWA organisation. Mazda prides itself on high expectations with regard to student behaviour, their application and their presentation with a strong focus on being involved in the community and their community spirit. We have a very strong old boys association and lots of students, when you see them after school, reflect fondly on their time at Mazda and they're proud to be Mazda men. We do try and have as much success as we can in sports and academia um, leagues. But above all, we want to maintain a gentle and friendly culture. So this is done through our values, and these values are derived from St. Eugene de Masnod. And the key focus for us is maintaining the respect and dignity of all students. Um, and it's been summarised quite well by our lay principal as saying gentle masculinity is how we want to behave. Um, we always want to maintain a connection with the history of the oblateness of the college. Um, and there's a very strong culture of staff being collegial towards each other and we do socialise quite well outside of our school environment. So in 2016, we did appoint, Mazinot did appoint a lay principal. So this created a lot of concern and worry in the community. Um, and the concern was based on, well, firstly we have a principal coming in that has not been involved at all in our college, it was from a different school. Um, and this principal was from another Catholic high school. So staff were quite apprehensive about the effect that this principle would have on the charism and ethos and values and the traditions of Mazinot College, not knowing what they were. And then would we become just like other SEMA schools and that it was lo losing a little bit of our, what made Mazinot special. Um, so we want to look at how does, how does a new leader come into a new school? Um, and to maintain the uniqueness of that school, and in particular how that happened at Maslin. And Grant highlights here the importance of people in leadership, and especially <coughs> principals, that they are the driving influence and the main influence on um, the culture within schools and ways that that culture maintains. So going back to that uh, model of culture by Brown and applying it to schools, uh, formal culture can be defined as things such as teaching practice, learning resources, professional development, um, CEO accreditation, financial resources, staff formation to ensure that the Catholic evangelical mission uh, is being met, uh, and leadership structures. Our informal culture are things like the experience and the history of the school, student expectations, attitudes of staff and students, emblems and symbols, Something like the uniform is still a part of that informal culture beliefs. Even the politics between staff, um, but also the behaviours that we exhibit. We're going to focus, our discussion here is focusing on how can you retain the informal culture to ensure that a school retains its uniqueness, because that, that, is, that list uh, summarises the things that do differentiate schools. But at the same time, how can you fix some of these things while keeping that? Um, this quote by Belmont and Cranston again summarises that Catholic schools are especially challenged to maintain their overall character and ethos and at the same time integrate into a new context that is more appropriate to modern Australian society. So as a, a college, many of us identified that much of Mazinot's formal culture uh, needed to be reviewed uh, and our new principal certainly did a good job with that. As Bo said, we were behind with regard to adhering to CELA policy in a whole range of areas and cherry picked the parts of it that we liked. This needed to change and despite some resistance, it's been a good thing for the school to actually align ourselves more with those basic um, requirements, not only from a CELA point of view but from a legal point of view as well. Catholic identity. That was assumed when we had a rector in charge. We can't rely upon that any longer. 
Belmont and Cranston once again say that the religious character and mission of Catholic schools are, un are the unique characteristics that distinguish them both as educational institutions and as agencies that help to, help to hand on Catholic religious traditions. So clearly without a, a rector as our leader, we needed to take a more serious look at how we actually identified our own Catholic identity and how we promulgated that to the staff and to the students. A big part of ensuring we have a Catholic identity is ensuring that the staff themselves have an understanding of what it means to be Catholic and what it means to work in a Catholic school. And this is staff formation. Prior, it was handled via the Oblates and the Rector. Obviously, that can't happen anymore. So this process has been formalised and recorded to ensure that CY policy is met. It used to be primarily focused on the teachings of St Eugene de Mazenod with very little discussion on the wider Catholic system or the wider Catholic identity. Um, we now focus on, obviously we still focus on St Eugene de Mazenod, but overarching that is the life of Christ and, and Christ is our leader. Being a Catholic school, we try to live and be like Christ. The Congregation for Catholic Education, sorry, the Sacred Congregation for Catholic Education 1977 said a good Catholic school is one that is committed to the development of the complete person to live a Christ-like life. Schools must be ensuring the development of their social, emotional and spiritual needs of all students, teachers and professionals within the school. So it is the leadership's obligation to ensure that staff are experiencing Catholic formation uh, and it's been a fantastic thing to have that formalised and, uh, and, and treated uh, and recorded to ensure we are meeting CWA policy. Education of staff. We have more PD that is recorded and more uh, PD that is certainly going to improve our teaching and learning and other experiences with staff. Le modern leadership styles are structure. Um, there is a, a more of a focus to ensure that we have more of a voice uh, in the decision making of the school. So all of these things have been introduced through a person coming from outside of the community, uh, looking at what needs may need changing, uh, and implementing some measures to affect that formal culture. These aren't affecting the uniqueness of a school. These are improving teaching, learning, and basic structures. So our discussion is, can you actually change this, but not affect the informal culture, the uniqueness? And we'll just read a final quote, uh, quote down here. Crowther in 2002, a positional leader, the literature identifies the principle as pivotal in implanting a culture of shared leadership, building the skilled community with decision making and responsibility that is distributed throughout the organisation. So our informal culture, as Bo said before, we value the uniqueness of Mazenod College. So what needed changing? Our new principal met with each uh, staff member individually and discuss not only the formal culture, but also the informal culture. Generally, the feedback that he received was that people are happy, they love working at the school. And that can be seen in the low turnover at the college. We have fantastic students and families, great parents, this great community. Um, the expectations that we have of a student and ourselves are, uh, are respected and admired. There is great collegiality. So a lot of those informal aspects of culture are very respected and they're valued and staff didn't want to see the change. One thing that probably did need changing and one thing that our new principal did identify and that staff identified to him was that a lack of accountability had crept in. Some staff were doing the bare minimum or performing poorly and I guess a number of us were accepting that or, or helping them out or I guess covering up for it was starting to become the norm. Clearly that's something they had to change. And as a new principal that was identified, and we have a number of steps and procedures in place to assist staff when they are um, struggling to meet those basics of, of teaching and learning. Staff have a great respect for the Oblates and the, same, and the message of St Eugene de Masnod. That still remains. That's, that was identified as one of the key points of Masnod, one of the things that makes it unique. And that has certainly been retained. The history and symbols, the crest, the uniform, the things that identify us as being Maslow, they have meaning, are still here. They've been greatly respected. Um, as this uh, quote from Cook in 2001 says, it is imperative that the principal budget and give close attention to creating and exhibiting a school symbol system 
that reflects the school's mission. We have a number of emblems around the school. Much money has been spent on ensuring that not only do we have Catholic symbols around the school, but we also have Mazenod symbols around the school, whether it be crests, etc. So despite making some changes to the formal culture in the previous slide, as I said, to improve that teaching and learning, many of the aspects that make Mazenod Mazenod, that make it unique, have been retained. And if anything, some of the more what I'd call the politics of the school, such as this lack of accountability, um, have certainly been improved. That's improving the informal culture of the school. It's not detracting from it, um, which may have been the case if some of these other aspects had been changed. And I'll do Thanks. Um, so we were looking at Maznov as our <laughs> example, and it can be a bit of an extreme example. Um, but what we really want to look at is leadership overall and coming into any organisation and how do you maintain the uniqueness, the culture, the really valued and good points of that organisation. So we've sort of got a little diagram to explain how it all fits together. Um, and this is the cultural web um, demonstrated by Johnson and Scholes. Um, and that's a new leader le needs to learn the culture. So that is done through relationships, it is done through setting your standards high. All those things we talked about on the first day of the course, all the good characteristics of leaders needs to be strong to ensure that you can then work out which parts of the culture need to be continued and maintained and which parts need to be developed and explored further to create better learning outcomes for our students. Oh, yeah. next one, sorry. <laughs> oh, this is the Cotter's change model. And again, this is used for corporations mainly, but it's a really good example of uh, how our new principal uh, came into the college to essentially gauge how staff were feeling. And one of the key points is having a coalition of the willing. So through, as Bo was saying, forming relationships and meeting with each of us, he very quickly would have realised that many of the aspects of the informal culture of Elliot, you're not going to have a coalition of the willing. In other words, you're not going to have a, a consensus from staff that certain parts of that informal culture require changing. We have a quote over here, company cultures are like country cultures. Never try to change one. Work with what you've got. In other words, it's saying if you don't have a consensus to change some of the things that make a place unique, make a place unique, in other words, change the things that make Mazenod Mazenod and make it different from this Catholic school down the road, then it's going to create staff unease, unrest um, and disengagement. So I do credit our principal for actually asking himself a question. Is the change actually going to be beneficial or is the uniqueness, are aspects of the informal culture good and do they make Mazenob what it is? And just to build on this, often we'll hear our principal talk about when he's meeting with middle managers, the coalition of the willing and trying to build that up amongst our teams and I think he's adopted a very similar approach to his overall leadership style. Oops, sorry. Hey. So in conclusion, can a principal come into a new school and improve the formal aspects of its culture, teaching and learning, while retaining the informal culture, the things that make it unique? And we believe you can. I think the first thing is that they need to learn and develop an understanding of the uniqueness, the history, uh, all of those informal cultural aspects of the school. They need to learn from staff, hear the stories, discuss the uniqueness, develop a relationship, and recognise the uniqueness is important in our system. Each school should have its own story and create students, graduates, with their own experiences. If there is not community support to change those unique aspects, and if it's not detracting from the teaching and learning, it's probably best not to change it, because that is what makes the school it is. If you want to tell me. No, I what? just, yeah. no, I, I think what we should sort of highlight is that we're not expecting this to be an easy process or a process that comes in and happens instantly. It's a process that any leader coming into a, a new organisation for them, it's going to take a lot of time and a lot of work and trialling things and trying to get that co the coalition of the willing on board. Um, but yeah, it can be done, I think, that we can maintain the uniqueness of a school while improving other areas and transitioning from a religious leadership into a lay leadership. Great, and our uh, reference page, um, and we hope you enjoyed our presentation, John. Thank, Thank you. you.